Now, um, I will, uh, I'm going to save explaining how I got this working um, until Dave gets here. Because <laughs> when Dave Thompson uh, gets here, he is sure to ask how on earth I got this working. And I will explain it then because I don't want to explain it twice. Um, short version, uh, short version is I'm not using VMware player like I usually use. Um, I am using, yes, uh, I apparently did. Uh, I am using VirtualBox instead using a slightly tweaked version of Windows 98 SE. And we're going to get started right now. Hopefully there won't be any issues with the stream, but, I mean, it played perfectly well for... Over about an hour, so <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just willing to try many 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 things until until either my computer breaks or I do. Um, that's that's really doesn't make me an IT pro. I just tried a whole bunch of stuff. I googled a hell of a lot. It took me two whole days like it spent about i spent about five to six hours yesterday just trying to get this game running um <laughs> write down what i didn't sell it for a hundred dollars per download i'm not that cold i'm not that cold i would rather give that info away for free um so um again like i was started to say at the beginning of the stream I'm going to wait on explaining it until Dave Thompson shows up because he's going to want to know. So let's just get her started uh, and play through this because uh, this is a this is a a really fun one of the one of the better FMV adventure games out there, and I'm super glad. <laughs> I just need a working copy on 98 or XP. I have XP but no key. Like I said, Dark Omens, sit tight. I will explain how I got this working, but I want to wait because I've been sick for two days. My voice isn't what it should be. <laughs> and I don't want to explain it twice. It is semi-complicated. Very good, Dark Omen. Yeah, me too. I think these kids are okay, but... As far as their acting goes, but this kid in particular... Watch this dude's hilariously fake reaction to the hand. He looks somewhere else first, then reacts to that, and then looks. Look, look. <laughs> he looked somewhere else and then looked at the hand and then freaked out. That always makes me laugh. Every time I hear Cleveland, I think Howard the Duck. Oh, Howard the Duck. It's, it's got the patch on it, too, so we do have subtitles. <clears throat> Reporting for work, sir. Relax, son. This isn't the Academy. Yes, sir. And Mr. Sullivan will do just fine. I think you'll find that the COI is a bit more informal than your other branches of government. Now, let's set you to work. 
Some uh, city detectives sent this complaint over to us. It should be pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about the assignment, don't hesitate to ask. The door is always open, son. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. What is it, Mr. Pearson? I just pooped a little. Oh, yes, of course, your office. Oh. It's across the hall, and, uh... I just pooped my pants. Mess. Your predecessor departed uh, rather unexpectedly, and we're still short-staffed and haven't had a chance to clear it out for you. Well, I hope you can handle things on your own. It's something you're going to have to get used to with the COI. I just felt that scene President cuts off Roosevelt abruptly. Had just authorized the formation of the COI that summer. They were supposed to be the outfit that handled the real spy stuff overseas. It was the place to be if you wanted real adventure. At least, that was the bill of goods that the recruiters for the COI sold me. All it would have taken was Jim saying something like, Yes, sir, and we'll do And here I was, stuck in a crummy old office, in Cleveland of all places, as far away from any real action as I could imagine. Yeah, I did see that. Okay. You will notice. No mouse trails. Um, the mouse is pretty slow, but it works fine. The other thing you might notice is some popping and crackling in the sound that strangely only happens when you're not moving. For example, you can hear the popping and crackling, and then I'll move, and then it'll stop. Same thing during the FMVs, there won't be any popping and crackling of the music then, but strangely, whenever you're in a static scene like this, it's popping and crackling a little bit, but it's... I can totally ignore it. I'm just more than happy that the game works. <coughs> and it does work. Finally. Finally. I don't know what the hell they did with the damn mouse to make things so damn hard. Like, to make it, like, just so it just doesn't want to work with anything, but... Guardians of the Galaxy is a good movie. That was a fantastic movie, actually. I, I loved it. Um, just, this just some background on the COI. Oh, crap. I meant leave. Can I leave? Thank you. Leave. There we go. We'll open this one. Um. Check in with this Professor Strauss at some point. This might come in handy. A gun come in handy? You're kidding me. And of course, the you know everything else works beautifully here too. Options, saving, which we're gonna do a lot. I'm gonna leave that separate because that was something else I was doing. Uh, starting out, we'll call it. Inventory and check that gun. I'll check my badge first. Never hurts to have a look at your little medal. My lucky St. Christopher's medal. I've had it since I was a kid. I don't remember if that ever comes in handy or if that's just a thing. Thule awakens. Wotan Willy Wee is the order and unity of the Trinity. Their power is contained in the three. Uh, Brotherhood of Thule. Thule, motherfucker, Thule. Uh, complainant when it's Henry Finster. <clears throat> Alleged not Nazi recruitment cause of complaint is a flyer passed out at Finster Munitions Plant by unknown messenger. After review of flyer and interrogation of plaintiff, Nazi recruitment deemed unlikely in case given low priority. Plaintiff became verbally abusive when informed of such. Forwarding complaint to COI offices. Peter Marillo. And we'll look at the gun and we'll slide this forward. Hey, look at that. Little key hidden in the handle. And we can just exit out of this. Slide on over. Turn my lights on. Can't see nothing in here. There we go. 
And then we'll grab myself a key. I'm gonna use it and unlock that drawer. Because these notes will come in handy later. What a bunch of gibberish. in examining the artifacts that you describe. Please call me as soon as possible. I feel that these items may be of critical importance to your investigation. Interesting. This will come in handy later. Uh, and it's very important. It's our first real puzzle. If you don't count the key hidden in the gun, and I don't. Alright, and we'll go out the door and go to Mr. Sullivan's office. Yes. Sorry to bother you, sir. Not at all, Mr. Pearson. Come right in. <laughs> yes, Dave, I did. And now that you're here, I can explain uh, exactly what I did get it running. Um, should I talk to this guy first? No, I don't want to keep you guys on the hook. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, I ran the, um, I noticed that one person out there on the internet had gotten it working with a program called VirtualBox, which is basically just a different virtual machine thing. <clears throat> like VMware Player, it allows you to make a small Windows 95, 98 computer on your Windows 7, 8, or 10 computer. Um, so... I figured, what the hell, I'll try it. I tried uh, VirtualBox 5.0, um, and to get the display working, it was recommended to run something called SciTech Display Doctor, <clears throat> which uh, I did run and installed. And finally, for the first time, I had Black Dahlia working in a VM, kinda. Um, I was able to move the mouse on the main menu, um, but starting a new game crashed the game. And I was like, okay, there's one, one, one problem solved, but now there's another. Um, so I looked around online and the VirtualBox community was kind enough to, you know, well, kind enough to, they, they just had a discussion on their boards about it. And I just happened to read up on it that the best version of VirtualBox to use for Windows 98 is not the most current one. You want to use VirtualBox 4.3. Uh, I used the most up-to-date version of 4.3. I think it's like 4.3.38 or something like that. <laughs> installed Windows 98. Um, installed uh, SciTech Display Doctor. Um, and here's the it's, it's a bit complicated, but I'm going to explain, if I can, the, the, uh, the settings that I used when I set up the machine. Um, under System Settings for VirtualBox 4.3, Windows 98 SE, uh, I set the RAM to 512 megabytes. Um, don't know if you needed to do that or not. And I, I turned on uh, Enable I.O. Uh, APIC um, I again I don't know if that was required or needed uh, processor was set to 1 execution cap was set to 100 and enable PAE slash NX was enabled I checked that the last thing I did and this is important because if you don't do this it will break the installation under system and then acceleration there's an option for hardware virtualization enable vt-x slash amd-v I don't know what the hell that is but as long as it's enabled you can't use SciTech Display Doctor and that's what you need to get the game running at all <clears throat> so turn off disable vt-x slash amd-v under hardware virtualization I'm going to post the entire list of everything I did uh, to Vogons. There's a post I made there about trying to get Black Dolly running. Uh, I'm going to post everything I did there, but that's basically all you had to do. Set up Windows 98 SE, 
Um, I gave it 64 megabytes of video memory. Uh, I enabled 3D and 2D video acceleration uh, and didn't change anything else. Uh, storage, I just gave it a 4 gigabyte hard drive. But the important thing, the important thing is under system, under acceleration, under hardware virtualization, disable VT-X slash AMD-V, whatever the hell that is. I have no idea. But that blocked me installing SciTech Display Doctor on uh, VirtualBox 4.3. So I fought with it, I fought with it, I fought with it. Finally I found somebody who said as long as that VT-X thing was turned off, they were able to install SciTech Display Doctor just fine. So I did that. It slows the Windows computer down quite a lot. <clears throat> quite a lot. Like, um, it, it takes a while for things to access, and I got worried that the game was going to run too slowly, if at all. And you'll notice that the, the frame rate on the mouse is not exactly ideal. Um, but it's not horrible either. Like, the game is perfectly playable. <clears throat> the only problem that I have noticed at all is when you're in a, um, when you're in a static picture, like, say, in your office or something like that, occasionally the music will, like, crackle and pop. But as long as you're moving or watching an FMV, it doesn't seem to matter. I, um... Uh, like, there's, I there's no crackling or popping. About this case plan, sir. Certainly. What is it? Yeah, uh, I would try 4.3. The speed is probably equivalent to what it would have been in 1997. Yeah, probably. Uh, we already looked at this. I want to ask about this stuff behind it. We're going to ask about Finster, and we're going to ask about the detective. Sir, this munitions owner, Mr. Mr. Finster, is there anything you can tell me about him that wasn't in the report? Hank Finster is an interesting case. He's an important man with the fellows in the Defense Department. On account of there the are guys on eBay who charge a hundred bucks for a working home customized version of Black Dahlia. You catch my meaning. Well, there's always one thing after another with him. If it isn't the unions, it's the Reds. If it isn't the Reds, it's the Nazis. But he may have something there. Take a look at that invitation. What do you make of it? Anyone can see that it's fascist propaganda. It's more interesting to tell them that it looks expensive. Hmm. This invitation's a little odd, and I bet it didn't come cheap. I'd wager this brotherhood's pretty well set, whoever they are. But I don't imagine they're out to recruit just anyone. Good eye, son. It's a fascist tract, all right, but it's one that's aimed at the high-born in our society. Whoever's behind this, they're likely to have some backing. And that's going to make your investigation all the more dangerous. You'll need to be careful. I will, sir. And don't forget to ask about the detective. Who handled this case when it first came in, sir? A city detective named Marillo. I guess he's got his hands full now. He's handling the torso murders investigation. Terrible work, that. Um, they found another one just yesterday. Well... As far as the guys on eBay charging a hundred bucks for a working, customized version of Black Dahlia... I don't know if I could trust that. And they, they might be... They might be using the same setup that I am, and they just copied the, the whole machine, the whole Windows 98 machine, onto a USB stick or whatever, and just sold that. I don't know. Did I download the 98 SE VB file, or did I install it from my own file? Um, I created the virtual machine inside VirtualBox because I didn't want to try a downloaded version. Um, but what I did was uh, I installed it using my Windows 98 uh, ISO, which I had uh, I had made some time ago. I keep it on my computer just for such things. Uh, so I installed and created the machine myself. No, not not a hundred bucks. It's not it's not happening. That's not happening. 20? Sure. You know, I'd, I'd do that. But but I'd want some sort of evidence that it worked. Like something, you know. <clears throat> and I'd want to see it working on several different machines before I said, okay, 
take my money. But even so, what I'm doing here is I have all the discs, uh, all the discs from my actual copy, um, ripped to uh, not ISO format, but it's bin Q. And since VirtualBox doesn't recognize bin Q files as, you know, ISO files that you can just mount directly to the... I have daemon tools mounted, uh, mounting the CD to the D drive, which is then mounted in VirtualBox. It's kind of a pain in the ass. But I didn't, I didn't want to mess with it. Like, I'm sure that there might be a way to convert those bin Q files to regular ISOs and then do that, but I was just like, oh, I'm not... I, I, I've done enough to get this thing working. I'm not going to that extreme. Uh, I think I've asked everything I can, so let's back out of here. And let's ask about my predecessor. Sir, what happened to the fellow I'm replacing? <coughs> uh, Walter Pensky. Good man. And a good agent. Once. The job got the better of him. I imagine he must have been under a lot of pressure, sir. We all are these days. Hey, James R. Crypto. Just remember, Mr. Pearson, we follow orders, not personal crusades. I will, sir. Uh, you don't have 98 anymore? Um, that is kind of a problem, but I suspect you'd be able to find it if you looked on the internet. Google is your friend, sort of thing. But, uh, we do not condone piracy here. Um, not at all. Not even a little bit. Uh, let's get out of here and go talk to Mr. Finster. Because he's a fun character, if I recall. Excuse me, could you tell me where Mr. Finster's office is? He's up there. You're welcome. He didn't say thank you, he just opened his mouth. Mr. Finster? Jim Pearson from the COI? been assigned to investigate your complaint. Ah, oh, what the hell took you so long? I guess all my calls to Mayor Lausch finally got you guys off your cans. First of all, that's interesting, isn't it? Finster Lau. Uh, let's ask about the guy who gave him that invite. What do you remember about the man that gave you that invitation, Mr. Finster? He's a no-good bum, I remember that. Do you remember his name? I employed a Nazi sympathizer right here in my own factory. He was an employee of yours? Of course not. I don't hire Nazis. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little confused. Who's the Nazi? Why did they send the boy to do a man's job? What are they trying to do? Drive me crazy? Uh, wait just a minute, Mr. Finster. That's not called for. My foreman, George Hansen. I used to think he was a good man. Well, he drinks a little bit too much, but he's a hard worker. Well, anyway, how am I supposed to know he traffics with Nazis? Well, he brings this riffraff right through my doors, into my factory, right into my office. He could have killed me. He was standing as close to me as you are right now. Well, naturally, I fired him on the spot. Riffraff. Oh, you idiot. George Hansen. Haven't you been listening to a word I said? Do you remember the name of the man that gave you that invitation? Of course not. I, he never mentioned it. He said he was just a messenger. How long has it been since I successfully played Black Dahlia? Um, not quite that long. I would say maybe five, ten years, maybe. Because I remember having a similarly difficult time getting it working on a Windows XP laptop, but I, I believe I eventually did get it working. Um, but back then I wasn't making videos or, you know, um, or live streaming or anything like that, so I have no proof. Uh, ask for a description. Can you describe this messenger for me? I already described him to that detective. Look, I even picked his photograph out of one of their books. Oh, but he didn't care. All he was interested in was that vagrant killer. Well, if you ask me, he's doing this city a big favor. I wouldn't know anything about that, sir. Can you describe him again for me, please, for my benefit? You know, if you guys had done your work in the first place, you'd already know this. Yeah, he looked like a killer. Real mean, squinty eyes, red hair, and the bushiest red beard you'd ever want to see. Hey, there's no mistake in this guy. 
Oh, this guy's a trip. Do you have any idea where I might be able to find this messenger? Of course not. Okay, what about this other fellow, the foreman? Well, I used to live in company housing, but I had him evicted, of course. You have any idea where I might be able to find him? A man of my standing doesn't fraternize with his workers. Hey, the Roy Teal. Although, I have been told that George likes to throw his money around a lot on payday. The men, they like this cheap whiskey saloon in the Roaring Third. Uh, uh, McGillies, McGarrity's, some kind of nickname. McGinty's, that's the name of it, McGinty's. Yeah, Windows 10 might be an issue. Um, couldn't say how this is going to run on that, or even Windows 8. What can you tell me about this Brotherhood, Mr. Fisher? What can I tell you? Oh, what makes you think I can tell you anything? I'll tell you what it is, though. It's a Nazi conspiracy is what it is. Now, what makes you say that, Mr. Finster? The invitation has no swastikas, no insignia, no clear-cut signs of Nazi involvement. Now, you mark my words, young man. This is a Nazi conspiracy, or my name isn't Henry W. Finster! I'm gonna need some hard facts before I'm able to make that stick with my superior, sir. Where do they find you guys? What, what, they just pull you out of a pumpkin patch? It's right before your eyes! Those screwy symbols! You recognize the symbols on that invitation? I've seen them all over Germany. When were you in Germany, Mr. Finster? Now don't you give me that look. Mr. Finster, I, I'm... I... There is nothing wrong with Germany. <laughs> My grandparents were born in Deutschland. We still have family there. The German people are upstanding, hard-working, God-fearing folk. And the American worker could learn a thing or two from them. The only thing wrong with Germany is that Austrian peasant and his gang of street thugs. My ap apologies, Mr. Finster. I am only trying to establish the facts in the case. Okay. It's been 15, 20 years now since I've been there. But I will never forget those symbols. Do you have any idea what those symbols mean? Of course not. I would never anything to do with that sort of thing. The lip syncing is terrible? Um, not on my end. <coughs> Seems okay to me. Uh, okay, now where to? Oh, yes. Now, let's go talk to Detective. Uh, we'll call this Finster Fun. Go see that Detective. I was going to say, the audio sync does not appear to be on my end. Come in. Uh, I would try refreshing. Me, Detective Merlo? Uh, I'm Jim Pearson. I'm from the COI. I'm here about Mr. Finster's complaint. The what? This had better be good, kid. I'm up to my neck in murders. That's kind of gross. Um, okay. Check, check, check. Checky, checky, checky do. Hi. I'm here to tell you about the properties of powerful lip syncing. Is it me? Like, is, is there an issue with me? I mean, I'm cool with it, if it is, but. Uh, let's ask about these torso murders, because they're going to be important. Are you any closer to catching the torso killer? That sick son of a bitch has been too clever. How's that? Well, for starters, he's not leaving enough behind for us to identify. Our best guess is he's cutting up bums and whores, people nobody'd miss. Takes him apart real clean, too, like a, like a doctor. Two wax and he's through him. The queerest thing is, he bleeds him dry, washes him clean, and wraps him up like a butcher all. Nice to need in newspapers. It's like nothing I've ever seen, and I've seen plenty. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before something breaks through. Oh, you got that right. His kind always slips up. And when he does, bang, I'm gonna be right there on top of him. Hmm. Hasn't the FBI been able to give you any relief with the torso investigation? Ah, that's a good one, kid. Elliot Ness has saddled me with a junior A G man named Winslow, who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. About all he's done is look pretty in his fancy suits for the photo boys and flapped his gums to the reporters about how he, he, is gonna catch that killer. Mm. No 
Okay. Now on to business. You were the detective that handled Mr. Finster's complaint? Finster? Oh yeah, Finster. I remember him now. Listen, kid. If I had a nickel for every so-called Nazi spy in this city, I would be a very rich man. So you don't think his complaint was legitimate? Ever since you secret agent types start stirring people up about Nazi spies, every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a beef about his neighbors has been into my office. You care to take a guess how many of them panned out? Well, what did your investigation reveal? Was there anything to the invitation? You did investigate this, didn't you? Now listen, Sonny! There's a butcher on the loose in my city! I didn't have time! Hey, isn't that sort of thing your job now? I don't have time to babysit another fed. Detective, I, I'm, I understand you must be very busy right now. You don't understand nothing! Every day, it seems, we find another body or a part of a body. We don't have enough good leads and we don't have enough men to cover this case. And on top of that, I got some horse's ass from the Federal Bureau of Investigation looking over my shoulder trying to tell me how to do my job. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Detective. I'll be on my way. This case is gonna be the death of me yet. I love this guy. For what it's worth, kid, Finster had a look at the mugshot books. He said he spotted to Joe what handed him that screwy invitation. I think he even marked the books and everything. You can have a look through them if you think it'll help. Thank you, Detective. He's great. <laughs> <coughs> um, <coughs> the Roy <right> Teal. <coughs> I've had better. <coughs> uh, I've been very sick for two days. This has been the worst three day weekend so far in a long time. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's better to be sick when you're off than sick and working. This is definitely the book that uh, Finster must checked. must be the one Finster looked through. Now we're looking for a guy with a red... red hair and red bushy beard. <clears throat> there he is. Lewis Fisher. Lewis Fielder. Lewis Fielding. Good to know. Theft, racketeering, forging, writing bad checks. Fisher. Kind of a German name, isn't it? None of these others matter a bunch, I don't think. Except maybe this guy. That guy's creepy looking. Anyway. Boy, Cleveland doesn't have a lot of crime. <coughs> There's like 30 or 40 dudes in that book tops. Okay, so we can get out of here, yes? Um, where are we going? We're gonna go to McGinty's Bar. Roy. Thank you, Roy. Uh, Thursday night, I stumbled toward the bathroom, tripped over the vacuum cleaner in the hall, fell into the bookcase, and cut up my back. Oof. Ow. These guys look unsavory, don't they? And now for the day's news. Our top story today comes straight from the tough and tumble neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. There, the police continue their exhaustive manhunt for the torso killer. Mm. As his headcount hits seven, the citizens of Cleveland raise their voices in protest. Meanwhile, the city police have been baffled by this insidious madman's terrible work. The latest victim, discovered by two children playing along the banks of the Cuyahoga River... Well, they were playing all right unidentified. <laughs> Meanwhile, in news from around the world, our boys at sea captured an Axis ship in equatorial waters. The Axis vessel unsuccessfully attempted a nefarious ploy to bluff its way through the British blockade. Our sources indicate the Axis boat falsely flaunted our very own stars and stripes and had an American name painted on her pilot house and stern in an attempt to pass itself off as one of our own. Our American Clever. cruiser's good commander was too smart to fall for such a trick, however, and he immediately ordered the ship to heave to. 
Despite a last-ditch effort by the Axis merchantmen to blow up their own ship, their vessel was captured without incident. In other global news, snow and near zero weather in Russia halted Nazi troops dead in their tracks. <laughs> More bad news for the Axis as the British began an offensive in North Africa along the 130-mile Libya line. Score one for Hitler, though. Wire reports confirmed that the Australian cruiser Sydney was sunk by a German raider disguised as a Dutch merchant ship. I guess our mates down under could use a few lessons from our own boys at sea. <laughs> In Washington today, Subaru Kurusu, Japan's new and super special envoy to the United <laughs> States, is set to begin a round of talks with the State Department. I think this will go on forever if These I just let it. talks come right on the heels of Tokyo's <clears throat> stinging remarks. Oh, yeah, Roy. Uh, Black Dahlia is great. Um, it's uh, better than Ripper. And if you enjoyed Ripper, you'll, you'll love this. Officials in Washington it's one of the better Cruiser FMV games because there's actual gameplay to it. On the diamond, Excuse me, I'm looking for a man named George Hansen. He used to be... I never heard of him. Listen, buddy, I'm not trying to cause any trouble for you. I'm just, I just need a little help trying to find a friend of mine. Yeah, friend, huh? Look, I got nothing to do with no lousy feds. Now, why don't you do me a favor and scram, huh? And while you're at it, take that friend over there with you. Scaring away all my business. ...and a repeal of the Neutrality Act. Said one editor, the so-called... Take my friend with me? Midwest ...exists only Hello. in the minds of congressmen who have failed to keep abreast of a great surge of public opinion during recent months. In other national news... Hopes ran high that John L. Lewis will call an end to the coal mine strike after 12 striking miners were shot during riots. New York has a new hero. Wow, in this Gary news really does go on forever. Dog. The lovable Collie's barking awoke 16 families residing in apartments above an Upper East Side store. Excuse Our me. Dog, I'm looking for a man named George Hansen. He used to work at the Finster Munitions Factory. Do you know where I might be able to find him? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I haven't made his acquaintance. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Of a local doctor, Jerry was revived. Mm. Give that dog What's your name? A biscuit. Who wants to know? My name's Jim Pearson. I'm from the COI. Local news, prominent Dayton well, have a seat, Jimbo. G. Sundorf was killed in a plane crash. Meanwhile, the name's Winslow. In our own Dick Winslow. City, an nice to meet you, Mr. Winslow. What brings you here? Oh, no need to be so formal. You can call me Dick. The cheering crowd of freedom-conscious Clevelanders condemned... I'm just here for a drink. <laughs> for really? To strikes. This just Today's doesn't letter, seem like your type of place. Word, oh, why not? <laughs> a can of working Joe like me go out for a drink? Can he try someplace new? Well, you just seem a little overdressed, is all. <laughs> Guilty as charged, sport. <laughs> Not a bad bit of deduction, that. Oh, ah, well, I might as well confess, you're right. They are about to sign a Indian With the FBI. <laughs> really? To a two -year contract to what are you doing here? Staking the place out. I thought through, I might get a lead on the torso Boudreau, killer, but uh, I haven't had much luck yet. A big league club. We now return you to You're the new here, aren't you? Yeah, I just started. Oh, well, you don't say. And uh, what brings you here to McGinty's, Jimbo? Well, I'm working on an investigation of my own. Oh, really? How interesting. Did uh, someone steal some plans for a secret weapon? Huh? Or uh, commit an act of sabotage, perhaps? <laughs> no, uh, nothing like that. I'm looking into a group of possible German subversives. Well... Perhaps your men are on our little German blacklist. You mean they haven't told you about that? Uh, your office should have a copy. Really, I'd complain to my superiors right away. How can a new agent hope to succeed without the necessary tools? What, what is this list? It's a list of suspicious Americans of German descent. FBI's been keeping tabs on them for a while now. Oh, it wouldn't take much for some of them to sell out Uncle Sam for, a uh, Uncle Adolf, huh? Thanks for the information, Dick. This list might come in handy. Well, um, I should <clears> be going. <throat> uh, listen, sport. You're new here, so I'll give you one little bit of free advice. Some of the people in your department have stepped on some toes, so, uh, be careful where you put your foot down. I'll remember that. 
Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Jimbo. Uh, hey, drop by my office anytime. Thanks, Dick. I just may take you up on that. Slimy little bastard. All right. Um, where to now? Oh yeah, we got to ask Sullivan about the blacklist. <clears throat> Yes. Sorry to bother you, sir. Not at all, Mr. Pearson. Come right in. Sir, is it true that the FBI's made a list of suspicious German Americans? Who have you been talking to? Special Agent Winslow, sir. Oh, yes, Agent Winslow. It's true, we do have such a list. <laughs> when France fell to the Germans, a lot hey, of people felt that it must be due to the work of a fifth column of spies and traitors. We got the boys in Washington thinking that if we weren't careful, things might happen the same way here. And, well, Mr. Hoover and his FBI set to work, watching anyone they felt could betray their own countrymen. Naturally, important Americans of German descent were watched most closely. Could I get a look at it, sir? I believe there might be a connection between some of the names on that list and the case that I'm investigating. Just remember, son, it's possible that any of these men on that list are hard-working Americans, no different than you or I. Don't go off all half-cocked simply because Hoover's men put a name on a list. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we got our first real puzzle to solve. <clears throat> Alright, um, actually no, I shouldn't go here yet. I go here yet. I think it's, it's irritating that you can't just take that note with you, but whatever, we're going to go to the phone. We're going to look at a couple of things. First of all, Finster Stationery has his phone number on it, CMR140. That's going to be important. So CMR would be 267. <clears throat> so 267140. Now the blacklist has all of these case numbers and so forth. You flip to the second page and there's Henry Finster, but <clears throat> I'm gonna say Penske figured something out. Which you can check by checking his notes over here. And that is that the case notes actually refer to the person's phone number right there. <clears throat> now what you do is you take the first three letters that the FBI assigned them, like this, PIT becomes 748, but then you have to modify them a little bit. The first number you leave alone, the second number you add one, the third number you subtract one. So Cleveland is CLV, and that would be 258, except you add one to the second number, so that's 26, and then subtract one from the last number, so 267, just like Hank Finster's number. And then, he was on the right track here, with all three numbers, you have to subtract or add them, and if you look at... Hank Finster's number, CLV, we know his phone number is 140, so you get 1 from 21 by subtracting the 1 from 2, you get 4 from 84 by subtracting the 4 from 8, and you get 0 by subtracting 1 from 1. So, the only other person on this list whose name we know is Dr. Strauss. 
apparently came up in Penske's report. So CLV we already know is 267. And the rest of his number is 5 minus 1 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, so it's 404. So now we're going to give him a call. <clears throat> Whoa! Witcher 3 for two bucks? Damn, that's a deal. And that, that game is worth hell on more than two dollars. You, you'll get way more than that enjoyment out of it. Guaranteed. <clears throat> two, six, seven, four, zero. Now, I always felt that this puzzle would work better if you could call Henry Finster and double check that that number works, but you can't. You just get a dial tone. Call him a jerk. That's kind of awesome if he did. <coughs> All right. Um. Well, there's nothing else to do but go to the bar and see if Hanson showed up yet. Nope, and it looks like Dick's gone too. Oh no, there he is. Well, still no sign of George, though. Alright. And now for the day's news. And Our we'll go back to the office. When I arrived back at my office, there was another message to him. Whatever had been going on between Walter Penske and Dr. Strauss seemed to be pretty important to both of them. Since I didn't have any more leads on my own investigation, and since Strauss's name did appear on the FBI's blacklist, along with Hank Finster's, I thought I might as well check into it. Hmm. Yay. I just gotta hope Damon Tools doesn't poop out on me. Yay, it's working. Mounting disc two. Oh no! Tell me that's not gonna work now. swap disks in the virtual machine to something else and then swap back to D I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad one I hope it's a good one There we go. Phew! Let's get nervous. <clears throat> Physical release, five game discs and map. Wow. Excuse me. Are you Miss Strauss? I'm Helen Strauss. Uh, hi, how do you do? I'm Jim Pearson from the COI. I uh, came across your name at work, and I was hoping, uh, well, I... I was hoping you might be able to help me. I'd, I'd love to. Uh, that is, if I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, you seem a bit nervous, darling. Um, but it's okay. Ain't nothing going on here. Ain't nothing but a thing. 
to talk to her, ask about her father. What is it exactly your father does, Helen? Why? Didn't Mr. Penske tell you? Uh, I'm afraid I've never met Mr. Penske. But don't you... I'm afraid I don't understand. Didn't Mr. Penske send you? I... I've replaced Mr. Penske. I, I found the message you left for him, and, well, I was hoping you might be able to tell me what he needed to see your father about. He wanted my father to examine some artifacts he'd found on an investigation of his. As far as I know, they never did meet. My father was called away suddenly on business, and I didn't want to leave Mr. Penske in the lurch. That's why I volunteered to help. If I could, of course. What is it you do here, Helen? Well, I'm just a graduate student intern here now, but one day I'm going to run this museum, or one just like it anyway. They've got such a wonderful display of Central European artifacts from the Middle Ages. Well, that's my area of study, Central European history. And I'm sorry, I'm sure you're not interested in listening to me babble. I could so just go on and on about my work. Oh, that's okay, Professor. My father's the professor. And I just bet you're a chip off the old block. Oh boy, Jim. Um, okay. Uh, show her. What do you make of this? Hmm. I, I don't think I've ever heard of the Brotherhood of Thule before. Ain't nothing but a G thing. I do seem to recall a group called the Thule Society, however. G for German? Or a secret society that became very popular in the German people uh, after the Great War. Some people said they were a cabal of black magicians. <laughs> black magicians? You, you don't really believe that, uh, do you? No, it's far more likely they met as an excuse to drink beer and talk about politics. Uh, they did have a great deal of influence on the German people, however. Uh, they were early proponents of German nationalism and Aryan superiority. And without the backing of the Thule Society, the Nazi party probably would never have lasted. Yeah, wouldn't that have been a shame? What do you make of those symbols? Uh, these are runes, and that's their English translation beneath them. These crests are what really interests me, though. They're not the crests of traditional German aristocracy. Wait a minute. What is it, Helen? Look, I know where I've seen these before. What are you looking for? Aha. These are the crests of an ancient sect of Germanic knights. They posed as Christian soldiers. They still continue to worship the old Norse gods and gave human sacrifices to them. Whoa. Duke Ferdinand of Austria, founder of the Order of the Cross. The House of Wittlichstein, officer of the Order of the Black Rose. Knights of the Trinity. House of Linz, officer of the Order of the Cross, House of Cora. Knights of the Order of the Sword, Rudolph of the Teutonic Knights, House of Witten. Notorious tyrant and sorcerer. This is, of course, the most awesome. It's got a dragon wreathed in flames. Knights of the Trinity. All the Knights of the Trinity have had their names stricken. Interesting. You just know these are going to be important. Yeah, that one's kind of badass, too. Jesus, how many of these things are there? Olamook. Hello. The scribe. They were excommunicated by the Pope and forced into exile from Germany. Uh, I don't get it. So, how is it you know so much about these pagan knights? Well, I should know they're one of my father's pet projects. He's in the process of restoring a stained glass window with the crest of the officers of the sect even now. But I don't get it. What do those knights have to do with this invitation? Well, they're the same. 
The crests are the same. So, whoever these people are, this Brotherhood of Thule, they're modeling themselves after an ancient sect of pagan knights here in Cleveland? <laughs> it sure seems that way. Hmm. Ask about the stained glass window. Do you mind if I have a look at your father's project? Sure, I don't see why not. Do you mind if I examine? Well, I won't do anything to get you in the hot water with your father. I'll be very careful, I promise. As long as you're careful, I, I guess it won't hurt anything. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. Shit. Um. Don't know about this puzzle yet. The Trinity knives driven from Prussia. Sealed their bargain with excellent food and beer. Early wing indicates KOT occupation. Knights of Templar? Castle remains a manor house when the journey begins. Excellent freeze indicates Knights of Templar occupation. Missing window shows promise Nazi guards are uncooperative. Window last seen here before Habsburg fall. Bell. Alright. <clears throat> My money's on the Nazis being behind all of this. Uh, so, do you like Telltale-style adventure games at all, or do you not like them because of the QTE? Um, I played The Walking Dead for about, I want to say an hour, maybe a little longer, and then I stopped. I didn't hate it, but the, um, the, uh, uh... So these ruins, I mean, Thule awakens. I don't have anything else to show her right now. <coughs> Alright, um... I guess I should go back to the bar? news. Our top story today comes straight from the tough and tumble neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. There, the police continue their exhaustive manhunt for the torso killer. Hello. As his head Excuse me. Hits seven, the uh, I'm looking for a man named George Hansen. He used to be a foreman at the Meanwhile, Finster Munitions the Factory. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Who's asked? I'm Jim Pearson work. from the COI. The I was told he might be able to help me find Louis. along the banks of the Louis? Cuyahoga River. Remain this is about the creep that gave Finster that piece of paper, right? Meanwhile, in news from around That's the right. world, our boys so at sea you must be George. Yeah, I'm George. Waters. What can you tell me about this Louis? You have a last name? I suppose so, don't everybody? 
I don't know what it is, though, Mister. This Louis a friend of yours? <laughs> that rat. I didn't know him from Adam a few weeks ago. How'd you meet him? Me and some of the fellows was in here blowing off steam uh, after payday last month. This guy Louis was in here. He starts talking, and I start to feel kind of bad for him. He says he's a little down and out right now, but all he needs is some prospects, and he'll be back up on his feet again. I tell him I got some pool on the factory. Maybe I can get him in to see Mr. Finster. Maybe he can get a job. He didn't ask him about a job, though, did he? No. Nah. He gets in there and starts talking about that secret brotherhood crap. Next thing I know, Louis headed out the door, and Finster's busting his gasket. I lost my job. I lost my house, and I lost my wife, and it's all on account of that Louis. Do you have any idea where I might be able to find this Louis now? Oh, buddy, don't. And I wish. If I could find him, I'd break his lousy neck. Do you remember anything else about him? You said you were in here with your buddies. Would any of them remember anything? I don't know. I'll ask around, see if I can help you out. Stop back later. Thanks, George. You've been a big help. Huh. with the State Department. These talks come right on the heels of Tojo's stinging remarks regarding Roosevelt's Pacific policy. With the Pacific crisis mm. nearing its breaking point, officials in Washington hope that Caruso, Japan's pinch hitter on the diplomatic diamond, can head off a military confrontation. Lou Fielding. Also in Washington, a recent huh. survey of 59 Midwestern... I think that was uh, one of the aliases for Lewis Fisher. Continental Congress for Freedom... CMR 259, eh? Opinions. The newspaper Head Honchos reported that their communities were now overwhelmingly in favor of the administration's foreign policy and a repeal of the Neutrality Act. Said one editor... The so-called isolationist Midwest exists only in the minds of congressmen who have failed to keep abreast of a great surge of public opinion during recent months. In other national news, hopes ran high that John L. Lewis will call a coal mine strike after 12 striking miners were shot during riots. New York has a new hero in Jerry the Superdome. The really? Collies barking huh? awoke Sorry to have bothered you. Families residing in apartments above an Upper East Side store. Paolo nearly gave his own life, however. After seeing everyone to safety, Jerry left the burning building and collapsed. Thanks to the efforts of a local doctor, Jerry was revived. Give that dog a biscuit. In local news... Prominent Dayton entrepreneur Eiler G. Sundorf was killed in a plane crash. Who do you want? Meanwhile, here in our own beloved city, an estimated crowd of 6,000 gathered for the Freedom Day me. rally at public... Damn it. Well, the sorry to have bothered you. <clears throat> All right, later, Roy. ...Nazi hostage flame <clears throat> and call for an end to defense <clears throat> strikes. <clears throat> Today's weather, one word, friends. Brr. And finally, in sports today, the Barons extend their winning streak to seven games by defeating the Washington Lions 3-0 in an American Hockey League game. And unconfirmed reports <coughs> from Indians management indicate that they are about to sign a 24-year-old Indian shortstop, Smiling Lou Boudreau, to a two-year contract to manage our hometown boys. If such a deal goes through, this would... Oh. Hmm. Can't actually talk to the guy. Oops. Hello. What have we here? A bag of runes, you say? What's this? I better make a note of these symbols. 
It may be important. Hmm. Better go back to that museum. Hey, you. Do you suppose that these are the artifacts that Mr. Penske wanted to speak to your father about? Why, yes, I, I believe they are. Mr. Penske told my father there were inscriptions on them. These are runes. N Norse runes, I'm sure of it. Norse runes? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Norse. Uh, the ancient Scandinavians, the, the Swedes, the, the Danes, the Germans. You probably know of them as Vikings. Uh, we still see many of their roots today. For example, Wednesday is a derivative of Woden's Day or Odin's Day. Uh, and then whoa, there's... whoa, whoa. Slow down, Professor. Uh, are you trying to tell me that these runes... Are an ancient form of Germanic writing? Yes, that's right. The runes are a sort of alphabet. Uh, some people also use the symbols to represent words, like uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphics. These pieces look like they interlock somehow. Do you think you could help me figure out the order? Sure, I'd, I'd love to. What about, uh, what about these parchments here? Oh. They're the same runes, aren't they? Someone's already begun a translation of them. Nine gifts to Odin. That generally would have meant a sacrifice of some sort. A sacrifice? What sort of sacrifice? Usually a human sacrifice. The Vikings would choose nine strong men and hang them. Sometimes they'd be hit. Uh, as often as not, it merely meant an animal sacrifice. Go on. Uh, well, it, it's hard to tell. These, these sheets are just fragments. I, I'd need some time. All right. I'll check back later then. Cool. Um. <clears throat> Let me see that book again. Helen, could I see that book again? Sure, Jim. You mind if I take it over to the stained glass window? Okay, that's the one that the professor had almost completed of the stained glass stuff. We're looking for one with like alternating red and, red and green squares or something like that. Nope. Maybe this one? pieces that I saw. Do you mind if I have a look at your father's project? Sure, I don't see why not. <coughs>
Okay, so... There looks to be at least two. looking for something tiny. I can't turn them though. Drum, dum dum dum. <coughs> well, this might go. Maybe. But it doesn't look like pieces can be turned. Nope. So. Sure looks like it fits in there. This one. And then this one. No, no, the puzzles are very, very difficult in this game. But that's fine, I really enjoy a challenge. Um...
All right, one down, one to go. Is, though let's get these out of here clear up some space I'm going to assume that down just a titch maybe move them over a little bit too have feelings the bottom of the symbol not the top Question is, what does the other side look like? I'm starting to wonder if any of these other pieces are uh, incidental, like they don't belong there. Does that still leave me with one whole thing to put together? Alright, fair enough. I don't have enough room. <laughs> I don't have enough room left. Shit. Here. How about we just all put you all together? Did 
Ja. Well, this is gonna be fun. This. Rats. Guys. Guys. Oh dear God in heaven. Hopefully it's good enough for government work. <clears throat> and if not, there is a cheat code, so... Yes, you can skip all of this if necessary. Ugh. And in my case, it may be necessary, because the alternative may be murder. Might just start killing people. Like, ah, stupid puzzle! Sneak that little duber in there. Oh, there we go. Hey, you don't mind if I completely rip that puzzle your father was working on to shreds, do you? I'm gonna murder the shit out of it. Come on. Slide in there nice and snug. Yeah. How oh, close I can get it, probably. to. Clinky. Clinky, clinky. All right. Good enough for me. Can I assume this is the bottom? I think I can assume nothing, honestly. Sorry if I'm not talking about watching ARPCON charity stream too. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. That's fine. Speaking of which, Arv, uh, Arvcon's uh, charity stream is totally worth visiting. If you are interested in cool stuff. Because Arv and Elrond is definitely among the cool kids, as it were. This is actually the bottom of the last remaining diamond. go on top.
intriguing. <coughs> now, technically, I'd probably have to mush all four of them together and in the right order, maybe, but as far as I'm concerned, I've solved it, so uh, I'm going to type in the word leadhead. There we go. Ah! I didn't mean to do it. Okay. So now, I need to turn this lamp on. Hello. Landolf, Finsterlau, Mulhaven, and Fishterwald. Isn't that interesting? That sounds awfully like... Like Lewis Fisher? Fishterwald? Maybe? Let's go back to the bar. and pick tile for the kitchen? You want stained glass tile for your kitchen? That is crazy talk, sir. And now for the day's news. Our top story... Let's see if George knows anything new. ...the tough and tumble neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. There, the police continue their Hello, George. Manhunt for the Were you able to find out anything else about Louis? Nah, I asked around, but it's, it's like I told you, nobody knows this guy. Ah, oh, well. Meanwhile, this Thanks for your cooperation. If you happen to hear anything else, please give me a call at the COI office in the federal building. Uh, wait, 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 there, there is something else. It didn't mean nothing to me, but it, it might mean something to you. One of the boys says he overheard Louie talking to Mr. Finster. He says he kept calling himself Harold. I don't know if it means anything or not, but I just sworn on Holy Bible he said his name was Louie. I don't know if it means anything or not, but it could be important. Thanks again, George. Just catch his creep and lock him out the good. And had an American name painted on her pilot house and stern in an attempt to pass itself off as one of our own. Our American cruiser's good commander was too smart to fall for such a trick, however, immediately ordered the ship to heave to. Despite a last-ditch effort by the Axis merchantmen to blow up their own ship, their vessel was captured without incident. In other global news, snow and near zero weather in Russia halted Nazi troops dead in their tracks. More bad news for the Axis, as the British began an offensive in North Africa along the 130 mile. Score one for Hitler, though. Wire reports confirm that the Australian cruiser Sydney was sunk by a German raider disguised as a Dutch merchant ship. I guess our mates down under could use a few lessons. I'll try there, thanks. Boys at sea. In Washington today, looks like I finally Uru found Louis. Perusu, Japan's new and super special envoy to the United States, Hello. is set to begin a round of talks with the Even room, you said. These talks come. <clears throat> Swanky. Hello? I'm sorry, I was hoping you might be able to help me. I'm looking for a man named Louis Fisterwald. Is he here? Uh, what did you say your name was? I suspect that won't help me too much. Uh, I didn't. Uh, Hank Finster sent me. He had a message he wanted me to deliver to Louis. He's reconsidered Louis's offer. Mission? 
What's a convicted felon doing at a mission? I don't think it was smart to mention the convicted felon part, but okay. <laughs> Dear honored guest, welcome to the Raven Room, Cleveland's premier downtown social club. Be at ease, make yourselves at home. As a sponsored guest of one of our members, you are entitled to every measure of hospitality that we can provide. Feel free to enjoy a quiet moment in our well-stocked library or indulge in some fine gourmet comestibles in our dining room. Be sure to sample a glass of wine or a sniff to report from our excellent cellars as you take in an informative lecture or a musical performance in our recital hall. No need to feel uncomfortable or concern yourself with stuffy protocols. The very fact that you've been sponsored by one of our esteemed members is proof enough that good breeding comes not just from wealth and education, but an impeccable heritage as well. Joseph Mulhaven. That name's familiar, too. Stockwell, Rodney Dunn, Brian Brown, can't read that, Baron Rudolf von Sagottendorf, that has to be a made up name, or maybe not, Mr. Stephen Fitcht, Colonel Joseph Page, uh, none of these names are jumping out on me, yet. Hang on a second. What's this? Christian, if anything. Better save it. What's this? Looks like someone's been spending some time at St. Bartholomew's mission. East 55th Street. Apparently, Louis is good at a game. At least we know where the mission is now. I think we can leave now, yep. St. Bartholomew's mission! Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Excuse me, my name's Jim Pearson. I'm from the COI. I was hoping you might be able to help me. Sure, mister. I'll help you if I can. I've just got a couple of questions for you. Oh, all right. I'll help you if I can. Um, let's ask about Louie. Do you know a fellow named <coughs> Louie? Sure, I know Louie. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Yeah, he works at the Raven Room. He's a doorman. Say, why are you looking for Louie? I've just got a few questions for him. Oh, oh, I thought maybe he'd gotten into trouble. He get into trouble a lot? Yeah, yeah, Louie's always getting into trouble. Oh, but I shouldn't be talking about that. Why shouldn't you say anything about that? I don't rat on friends. Okay. How long have you known Louie? Oh, Louie and me go way back. You don't say. Yeah, since we was kids. Louie's always looking out for me. He even got me this here job. This Louie sounds like a swell guy. Oh, he's the best. So, you want to see something? Sure, why not? Nice. 
Louie even got me introduced to Gloria the Mill. Got my picture taken with her and everything. Say, that sure is a nice picture. Who are those other fellas? They friends of Louie's. Hmm. What do you do here, friend? I help the fathers with the place. Keeping things up, that sort of thing. Jack of all trades, huh? Yeah, I guess. Mostly, I help out with the hobos. Make sure there's no trouble. You, uh, you see a lot of trouble in here? No, not really. Mostly, I play cards. A lot of people come through here, I bet. Oh, yeah. Especially now, what with everyone afraid of the torso killer. No one wants to sleep by himself anymore. Hasn't anyone been able to help? No. They just try to get rid of the poor hobos. Why, just last month, Mr. Ness burned down their camps. Said he was trying to smoke out the killer, but all he did was burn down their homes. Well, I think it's a mighty decent job you're doing here, Brent. Thanks, mister. Trick Ernie into leaving. Um, no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, let's go to the museum. Talk some more to my dear little friend here. Were you able to figure out how those rune pieces assemble? I'm sorry, I haven't. <clears throat> They all seem to fit together. There could be hundreds of possibilities. Uh, I imagine there's some sort of sequence. The runes seem to suggest some sort of message when assembled. But without a proper key to their order, it would be impossible to figure out the right one. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. No, no, you've done a fine job. At least now I have some idea of where to begin. Yeah, if you want to talk. The parchments. What'd you make of them? Well, it's very odd. It threw me at first, but I figured out that the text, though written in runes, could be read phonetically in English. It turns out that it looks like they were describing some sort of ritual, and two of them, in fact, one to summon Odin and one to grant the powers of Odin. Uh, they seemed to revolve these rituals around three objects of power. One was a wise man's skull, one was a cup made from ashwood, and the third object wasn't as clear. It was uh, Talia's dark prison. Talia was the name of a seer. A muse. Does any of that mean anything to you? No, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. There's a book on Old Norse legends on the shelf if you think that would help. Thanks, Helen. I think it would help. But apparently I can't just pick it up. <laughs> hmm. Interesting stuff. So I don't want to see that book. I thought you were going to show me a book of old Norse legends and such. Oh well. Wait, 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 wait. What's this up here? Nope. Nothing helpful. Can't click on anything else. Alright. I thought you'd actually be able to look at the book, but I guess not. Fair enough. All right, let's uh, let's trick poor Louie into leaving the mission. The uh, fathers around now? No, nah, they left me to watch the place. <coughs> What's the matter, mister? <coughs> they were supposed to have a package for me. So you don't suppose you... No, I couldn't ask you to do that. Do what, mister? 
You don't suppose you could look for that package for me, do you? They were supposed to have it in their offices. Oh, sure, mister. I could do that for you. You'll watch the counter for me, won't you? No problem, friend. Say, mister. Yes. What's this package look like? Uh, it's about uh, that big, say, and about uh, that high. All right. I'll go fetch it for you. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Uh, we need to move all this stuff out of the way. No, 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 no. Wrong way. Dark Shadows, deck of cards, Joker, new thing. Why can't I move that? No! Stay up there. Yay, now I can move this. Whoa. Kinky stuff. A map of Cleveland, but that's what I want. Looks like Louie. There's Ernie. A couple more interesting people, but we'll take this picture. <coughs> I don't think there's anything else worth taking here. Nope. New. <clears throat> Never mind. Let's get out of here. Go talk to the cop. <clears throat> Ugh. Do you recognize anyone in this photo? Oh. <laughs> Those are some pretty big players you got there, kid. Dutch Schultz. Benny Cohen. Moose Malone. These boys run all the rackets in Cleveland. The skirts, Duchess girl. Gloria DeMille. <laughs> she was in pictures before the scandal sheets found out she was dating a gangster. I'm not too sure about these other two fellas, though. Well, the big man's name is Ernie. You don't recognize the other guy? I'll be damned. That's Louis the Fish. Small-time hood bagman for Dutch. Word has it he made off with Dutch's take from a booze run a couple of years ago. Took off with a cool ten grand. What happened to him? Well, he said he went to Atlantic City. He was throwing money around like it grew on trees. Blew the whole water. Women, booze, gambling, you name it. Word got back to Dutch and Louis disappeared. Ain't never been seen since. Everybody figured he was dead. He's not dead. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of crooks in this city that love to know that. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see if Louis's in yet. Well, there he is. We are going to save our game right now.
Well, well, well. If it isn't Louis Fisher, or is it Fielder? What is it these days? Uh, Fisterwald, right? That's Mr. Fisterwald to you. And who the hell are you? I'm Agent Pearson. I'm with the COI. I'd like to speak to you about some alleged subversive acts. Slag off, you lousy fed. I ain't got nothing to say to you. Well, we've got plenty to talk about. For starters, there's the subversive materials you've been handing out. You do know the penalty for treason, don't you? I ain't committed no treason. And you ain't got nothing on me anyhow. If you did, you would have pinched me already. Well, I've half a mind to take you in just for the sake of it. <sighs> Go ahead and try. I'd be out of the stir so fast your head would be spinning. You can't touch me. I got friends. Now beat it. I got a job to do. You haven't heard the last from me. Go to hell. Again, nine gifts to Odin where they're assembled, seven messengers to the Shepherds of Stars, one each to bear the sacred silent cipher, Shatter Heaven's Sphere, one singer to soothe the restless rolling earth, who laments the children that she bore that she may weep no more, a herald to the misty haunted halls of ice, the Aesir slumber beyond men's calls to lead the grey god home. Three vessels were there committed, the skull of an eighthling, a vizier and skull of great renown who had drunk from Amir's fountain. A cup of ash wood fashioned by the Norns to hold all sorrows, cut from the root of the dark tree. Thalia's dark prison, dusky and fair as the seer's sad visage, surfaces scried and bewitching. Each gift to him is now devoted, seven shimmering barriers thus are broken, the warm earth is now soft and sated. Frozen halls are lit and ringing, speak to the scald and share his quaff. In the vessel that sprang from wisdom, shatter the prison and release the seer to summon the grey god to his throne. <coughs> I wonder who these other men are. Oh, I know. And we're gonna use this to browbeat Louis. I hear you used to keep some pretty interesting company, Louis. What the hell are you talking about? Dutch Schultz, Lenny Cohen, Moose Malone? Oh, I'd be willing to bet your old friends would just love to know where you are right now. Where'd you get that? Never mind where I got it. I think we're gonna have that little talk now. Or do you think your new friends are gonna be able to help you now? <laughs> you lousy fit. Do you know what you've done? I'm a dead man. Dead for sure. I'm a reasonable kind of fellow, Louis. All you have to do is talk to me and this little matter just blows away. Now where'd you get the invitation you gave Finster? Shh! Not here. Are you crazy? They'll see me. They'll know. Who'll know? Oh, what's it matter? I'm a dead man. Dead for sure. I'll talk to you, mister. But not here. Why not, Louis? Why not talk here? I, I wouldn't. I can't. It's too late. He'd know. Look, he'd find me. I got a place. A safe place. Where he might not see me. We could meet there. Yeah, I leave now, and, and you have all the time you need to skip town. I won't light out. I swear. There's no point. I can't run anywhere. He'll find me. Please. Please. We'll talk. But not here. Anywhere but here. You better be square with me. I swear on my mother's grave. Just meet me there. All right. Tell me where the place is. I killed some time waiting to meet Louis, then headed straight over to the address he gave me. I'd never seen a crummier old building in my life. I walked in feeling certain that rat had given me a bum steer. Oh boy.
<coughs> oh dear. Okay, uh, what do I need to do here? Gotcha. Nazis. This gun is SS issue. Beat is all. What are you doing here? Are you Jim Pearson? Yeah, I am. The man told me he'd give me a nickel if I gave this to you. All right. I'm game. Here you go. Thanks, mister. Hey, what's in here? I don't know. Yeah. Somebody sending me random packages. I wonder what could possibly be in it. A uh, game or a thing of... Oh, dear God. That's somebody's head. <laughs> That's somebody's head. That'll ruin someone's day. All right. Okay, we swap discs and daemon tools. Come back over here. Yeah, this didn't work last time either. <clears throat> but what did work was swapping the... <clears throat> swapping the hard drive on the system. Something else. And then swapping it right back. Okay, go back to D. And it'll reload the... <coughs> <coughs> reload the D drive for me. Now, fortunately, this game is laid out in such a way that you don't have to, like, jump through hoops constantly swapping back and forth, which is really nice. Most of the game's uh, areas are uh, for different parts of the you know the investigation are all put together in the same disc which makes things nice and easy but now it should load yay that's not normal what the hell Just like a fed. Asleep on the job. I just had the strangest dream. Yeah, that's real sweet, kid. Now, if I can tear you away from the sugar plum fairies, I got a few more questions I want to ask you about Fisher's murder. Sure, detective, but uh, didn't we already cover all this at the station house? Things have changed. We found the rest of Louis scattered around Lake Erie this morning. Oh, I see. 
What's on your mind? Let's start with why the torso killer is delivering to you like he's your goddamn milkman. Um, well... Should I ask? I'm not sure. Can we save? We can. Um. I'll tell you what I've learned so far. I don't know anything about the torso killer, Detective. I was supposed to meet Fisher at this warehouse. He was gonna talk to me about this Brotherhood of Thule I've been investigating. Someone obviously got to him before I could. Not someone, kid. The torso killer. This thing has his handiwork written all over it. We've already covered this, Detective. It just doesn't add up. Fisher had to have been killed by this pro-German society to keep him from talking to me. All right, all right. Suppose Louis was some kind of pro-Nazi sympathizer. But if this here uh, brotherhood offed him, like you said, to keep him from squealing, why would they do anything to connect them to him? They wouldn't, but they might want to cover it up by making Fisher look like just another victim of the torso killer. Maybe. But get this, Louis had the word Nazi carved in his chest. Whoever did this wasn't a trying to cover up Louis's connection to some Nazi-loving bunch of weirdos. The person what did this hated Nazis. I think they were sending a warning to this here brotherhood of yours. I didn't know that. Now this really muddles things up. <laughs> If I learn anything else, Detective, I'll be sure to let you know. All right, kid. What do you know about the stiff in the abandoned factory? How does he play into all of this? Uh, I'll tell him what I know. I've never seen him before, but I'm pretty certain he was a German operative. What gives you that idea? The SSSU gun he was using to try to put holes in me. Has he been identified yet? Don't ask me, kid. The FBI's handling that. Looks like you'll have to visit our pal Winslow for that information. I still say that if you want to find Fisher's killer, you should find out who the dead crowd's friends are. I don't buy that. They already got to Louis at that point. Why come back to his hideout and start poking around some more? Maybe he had something they wanted. Could be. It's about as good an explanation as we're going to get at this point, I guess. You remember anything else, be sure to tell me. Okay, hotshot? Of course, detective. I'm like, those were the wrong uh, subtitles. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll get up and walk around to the other side of my desk for no apparent reason. <clears throat> um, well, it's disc three. Oh man, mercy, has it been two hours already? Hey, Joker, what's happening? Sorry, I don't know when you posted that, but I just haven't looked at the chat in a while. Um, Bachelor of Arts. <clears throat> Des Moines, Iowa. Iowa State. Nice. Alright, well. What's this? I guess I can't look at the rest of the paper. I survived the torso killer. A local man comes forward with a har story of harrowing escape. Uh, he offered him a free meal and a change of clothes. Curious, an older man dressed in an old way, playing Arkham Knight. Nice. Not for PC, I hope. <coughs> All right, and go to Sullivan's office, which is there. First he ruins my stakeout at McGinty's, and now we've got two dead men on our hands. Your boy's too green. Pearson is more than capable of fielding this investigation. Oh? And why wasn't my office notified? This complaint falls under COI jurisdiction. This is Pearson's case, and he had every right to be there. That's what you said about Penske. 
And you know what happened to Walty. He couldn't cut it, so the FBI Don't shipped you bring Walt. Jimbo! Uh, how you doing, sport? Gonna play nice now? We'll finish this conversation later. Slimy little asshole. Uh, the X-Bone! Sorry if I got you in a tight spot, sir. Never you mind about that, son. I'm more than capable of handling that grandstander. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, Winslow's a piece of shit. <laughs> Absolute piece of shit. Uh, update him on the case. I'm making some nice inroads on this investigation, sir. I'm sure you are, son. How are you getting along, Jim? I'm fine, sir. I remember the first time I killed a man. It was during the Great War. I'll never forget his eyes. It can be a nasty business we're in, Mr. Pearson. Yes, sir. Uh, what about Mr. Penske? What did Winslow mean when he mentioned Mr. Penske's fate? That arrogant... He's got a lot of nerve coming in here telling me how to do my job. Well, never mind about Winslow. One day, he'll find out that what goes around comes around. It's Walt you wanted to know about. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Walt stepped on some toes, and when his behavior became uh, a little uh, overzealous, the FBI called in some favors, and poor Walt was put up before the board. They declared that he was suffering from nervous exhaustion. They packed him off to a sanitarium. A sanitarium? Uh, okay. Well. Hmm, something's not right here. Save the game. Mm, we'll stick with disc three on this one. Uh, and I think I'm gonna call. I think I'm gonna call it. Uh, yeah. So I think this is fairly well evidence that uh, Black Dahlia can work on PC. <clears throat> Again, it's kind of amazing that it works at all, but it does work. Um, we've made it through discs one and two with no issues. Um, the only slight issue is loading a new disc, but uh, it's easy enough to work around. So yeah, um, and the music's even stopped popping and crackling as much as it was on disc one, so maybe that was just a bad disc read? I don't know, maybe. Couldn't tell you. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm going to call it for a day, because uh, I, I figured I'd be able to do this all day, but I'm really actually quite tired, so I'm probably going to take another nap. Uh, still sick. Blech. <laughs> still, still coughing up nastiness and not feeling so great, so... Uh, I'm gonna take it easy and relax, but we will be back. We're gonna we're gonna finish this because Black Dolly is awesome and no reason why not. So um, thanks for watching if you have watched so far, um, and uh, we'll pick up right where we left off uh, next time I come back, possibly later tonight. Uh, depends on how I'm feeling and what I'm what I'm up for doing. So um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, take it easy, and I will catch you guys next time.